Yashar, Jasher, 49. After these things, the king sent and assembled all his officers and servants, and all the princes and nobles belonging to the king. And they all came before the king. And the king said unto them, Behold, you have seen and heard all the words of this Ivriman, and all the signs which he declared would come to pass. And not any of his words have fallen to the ground. You know that he has given a proper interpretation of the dream, and it will surely come to pass. Now therefore, take counsel, and know what you will do, and how the land will be delivered from the famine. Seek now and see whether the like can be found in whose heart there is wisdom and knowledge, and I will appoint him over the land. For you have heard what the Ivory man has advised concerning this, to save the land therewith from the famine, and I know that the land will not be delivered from the famine, but with the advice of the Ivory man, him that advised me. And they all answered the king and said, The counsel which the Ivri has given concerning this is good. Now therefore, our lord and king, behold, the whole land is in your hand. Do that which seems good in your sight. Him whom you choose and whom you in your wisdom know to be wise and capable of delivering the land with his wisdom, him shall the king appoint to be under him over the land. And the king said to all the officers, I have thought that since Elohim has made known to the Ivri man all that he has spoken, there is none so discreet and wise in the whole land as he is. If it seem good in your sight, I will place him over the land. For he will save the land with his wisdom. And all the officers answered the king and said, But surely it is written in the laws of Mitzrayim, and it should not be violated, that no man shall reign over Mitzrayim, nor be the second to the king, but one who has knowledge in all the languages of the sons of men. Now therefore, our Lord and King, behold, this Ivri man can only speak the Ivrit language, and how then can he be over us, the second under government, a man who not even knows our language? Now we pray you send for him and let him come before you, and prove him in all things, as do, rather, and do as you see fit. And the king said, It shall be done tomorrow, and the thing that you have spoken is good. And all the officers came on that day before the king. And on that night, Yahua sent one of his ministering angels, and he came into the land of Mitzrayim unto Yosef. And the angel of Yahua stood over Yosef, and behold, Yosef was lying in the bed at night in his master's house, in the dungeon. For his master had put him back into the dungeon on account of his woman. And the angel roused him from his sleep, and Yosef rose up and stood upon his legs. And behold, the angel of Yahuwah was standing opposite to him. And the angel of Yahuwah spoke with Yosef, and he taught him all the languages of man in that night. And he called his name 
Yahu Chef. Rather, Yahu Seth. And the angel of Yahuwah went from him, and Yosef returned and lay upon his bed. And Yosef was astonished at the vision which he saw. And it came to pass in the morning that the king sent for all his officers and servants, and they all came and sat before the king. And the king ordered Yosef to be brought. And the king's servants went and brought Yosef before Pharaoh. And the king came forth and ascended the steps of the throne. And Yosef spoke unto the king in all languages. And Yosef went up to him and spoke unto the king until he arrived before the king in the seventieth step. And he sat before the king. And the king greatly rejoiced on account of Yosef. And all the king's officers rejoiced greatly with the king when they heard all the words of Yosef. And the king seemed good, rather, and the thing seemed good in the sight of the king and the officers to appoint Yosef to be second to the king over the whole land of Mitzrayim. And the king spoke to Yosef, saying, Now you did give me counsel to appoint a wise man over the land of Mitzrayim, in order with his wisdom to save the land from the famine. Now therefore, since Elohim has made all this known to you, and all the words which you have spoken, there is not throughout the land a discreet and wise man like unto you. And your name no more shall be called Yosef, but Sofanat Panik, rather Paniach shall be your name. You shall be second to me, and according to your word shall be all the affairs of my government. And at your word shall my people go out and come in. Also, from under your hand shall my servants and officers receive their salary, which is given to them monthly. And to you shall all the people of the land bow down only in my throne will I be greater than you. And the king took off his ring from his hand and put it upon the hand of Yosef. And the king dressed Yosef in a princely garment and he put a golden crown upon his head and he put a golden chain upon his neck. And the king commanded his servants, and they made him ride in the second chariot belonging to the king, that went opposite to the king's chariot. And he caused him to ride upon a great and strong horse from the king's horses, and to be conducted through the streets of the land of Mitzrayim. And the king commanded that all those that played upon timbrels, harps, and other musical instruments should go forth with Yosef. One thousand timbrels, one thousand mechalat, and one thousand nebalim went after him. And five thousand men with drawn swords glittering in their hands. And they went marching and playing before Yosef. And 20,000 of the great men of the king, girt with belts of skin, covered with gold, marched at the right hand of Yosef. And 20,000 at his left. And all the women and damsels 
went upon the roofs or stood in the streets playing and rejoicing at Yosef and gazed at the appearance of Yosef and at his beauty. And the king's people went before him and behind him, perfuming the road with frankincense and with cassia and with all sorts of fine perfume and scattered myrrh and aloes along the road. And 20 men proclaimed these words before him throughout the land in a loud voice. Do you see this man whom the king has chosen to be his second? All the affairs of government shall be regulated by him. And he that transgresses his orders or that does not bow down before him to the ground shall die. For he rebels against the king and his second. And when the heralds had ceased proclaiming, all the people of Mitzrayim bowed down to the ground before Yosef and said, May the king live. Also may his, his second live. And all the inhabitants of Mitzrayim bowed down along the road. And when the heralds approached them, they bowed down, and they rejoiced with all sorts of timbrels, Mekol and Nibal, before Yosef. And Yosef, upon his horse, lifted up his eyes to heaven, and called out and said, He raises the poor man from the dust. He lifts up the needy from the dunghill. O Yahuwah Savaot, happy is the man who trusts in you. And Yosef passed through the land of Mitzrayim with Pharaoh's servants and officers. And they showed him the whole land of Mitzrayim and all the king's treasures. And Yosef returned and came on that day before Pharaoh. And the king gave unto Yosef a possession in the land of Mitzrayim, a possession of fields and vineyards. And the king gave unto Yosef 3,000 talents of silver and 1,000 talents of gold and onyx stones and betalim and many gifts. And on the next day, the king commanded all the people of Mitzrayim to bring unto Yosef offerings and gifts, and that he that violated the command of the king should die. And they made a high place in the street of the city, and they spread out garments there. And whosoever brought anything to Yosef, put it into the high place. And all the people of Mitzrayim cast something into the high place, one man a golden earring, and the other rings and earrings, and different vessels of gold and silver work, and onyx stones and bedelium did he cast upon the high place. Everyone gave something of what he possessed. And Yosef took all these and placed them in his treasuries. And all the officers and nobles belonging to the king exalted Yosef. And they gave him many gifts, seeing that the king had chosen him to be his second. And the king sent to Pati Fera, the son of Achiram, priest of An, and he took his young daughter, Asinat, and gave her unto Yosef for a woman. And 
The damsel was very comely, a virgin, one whom man had not known. And Yosef took her for a woman. And the king said unto Yosef, I am Pharaoh, and beside you none shall dare to lift up his hand or his foot to regulate my people throughout the land of Mitzrayim. And Yosef was thirty years old when he stood before Pharaoh. And Yosef went out from before the king, and he became the king's second in Mitzrayim. And the king gave Yosef a hundred servants to attend him in his house. And Yosef also sent and purchased many servants, and they remained in the house of Yosef. Yosef then built for himself a very magnificent house, like unto the houses of kings, before the court of the king's palace. And he made in the house a large temple, very elegant in appearance and convenient for his residence. Three years was Yosef in erecting his house. And Yosef made unto himself a very elegant throne of abundance of gold and silver, and he covered it with onyx stones and bedelium, and he made upon it the likeness of the whole land of Mitzrayim, and the likeness of the river of Mitzrayim, that the waters, rather, that waters the whole land of Mitzrayim. And Yosef sat securely upon his throne, in his house, and Yahuwah increased Yosef's wisdom. And all the inhabitants of Mitzrayim and Pharaoh's servants and his princes loved Yosef exceedingly, for this thing was from Yahuwah to Yosef. And Yosef had an army that made war, going out in hosts and troops to the number of 40,600 men, capable of bearing arms to assist the king and Yosef against the enemy, besides the king's officers and his servants and inhabitants of Mitzrayim without number. And Yosef gave unto his mighty men and to all his host shields and javelins and caps and coats of mail and stones for slinging. <laughs>